Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome along to our morning broadcast here at the Welcome Evangelical Church. We just really appreciate you just taking the time just to to click in to watch on, and uh, I, I really do pray that you'll be blessed and you'll enjoy uh, our broadcast this morning. Um, just from the very outset, um, as we begin today, um, there was a message posted last night um, on our church Facebook page with a little bit of good news, hopefully, um, that we are intending here in this church to open up again on the 5th of July. Um, obviously, that is provisional at, at the moment because we're really just waiting to hear um, uh, this week on the news um, basically what the guidelines will be and I'm sure you would appreciate that all of that needs to be organised, um, especially if restrictions are in place and how many people um, we're going to allow um, to be able to come in to one particular setting. Um, so I would just encourage you to just look at our Facebook page and um, in, in the next coming days just follow it and we will try to update it. Um, and so we'll just see how things go. But that is the plan. Um, we're looking forward, God willing, uh, in two weeks' time to be behind the pulpit again um, and to be ministering God's word with the family of God together. Uh, but like I say, just keep following our church page and any updates we will provide and let you know in due course. There may be some changes uh, in, in relation to times and things like that, but we'll, we'll try and get around that and, uh, and we'll, we'll just see how things go. So thank you very much. I thought I would just mention that. And again, um, put that in your diary. Um, maybe folks are, are, are watching on today that, that normally wouldn't come along to church or whatever. And, and, you know, we would love to have you here at the welcome if you don't have a church that you regularly attend. And uh, maybe you can think about that and you'll be more than welcome to come along. Um, today, I just thought I would get that out of the way, first of all. Today is Father's Day and we want to really acknowledge all of the wonderful fathers of our church and all the wonderful fathers that are listening on today. Um, I trust that you are getting spoiled rotten by your family and I really do pray that you'll have a wonderful day today. I got up this morning and I was thinking about my late father and uh, just thinking about some of the, the precious memories that we have over the years and what we shared together and you know can think of a life um, from a teenage boy where he became a Christian and he served the Lord right through to his passing at 77 years of age and like I say I have so many happy memories even um, coming along here to the church and taking up the pastorate and him coming in and helping and he was so practical he was so involved in the church and certainly on Father's Day, I miss him as I'm sure you miss your fathers today. And uh, we just think about them all. But on that subject of, of fathers, um, I just want to mention also another wonderful father. And I know that his, that his children, uh, his two daughters are probably watching on today and all of the family. And uh, we had a wonderful father here among the other wonderful fathers. And his name was John Walker. And God called John Walker home just a few days ago. And I would just like to just talk about John just for a moment, just by way of tribute. 14 years ago, when I took up the pastorate here of the church, John was a servant deacon here. And I have to say that over all of those years, John has been a wonderful friend to me personally and to this church. He was a wonderful deacon. He was an outstanding deacon. He was a great servant. He had a wonderful servant's heart. He would have been the first face that people would have seen walking in through the doors. And you would have been welcomed with a big smile, being handed a hymn book. Um, he was very practical, very hands-on, um, giving people lifts back and forward to church. Uh, and he was such an encouragement. I I can't remember, you know, John being nothing else but always encouraging, always complimentary, always had that smile on his face, always very positive. 
uh, and so encouraging as I say and I will remember him fondly you know, especially as a man of prayer he would have prayed at the, at the prayer meetings and he would have just touched God you know praying for the work and praying for family and friends and just he was just a, a wonderful man of God and to Anne and to Julie and to all of the family that's maybe watching on today we just want to pay tribute to a wonderful man of God that the Welcome Church has been blessed to have over the 20 year period that John was here uh, along with his wife Eileen who God called home nine years ago and here they are both reunited again and we just look forward to seeing them and tomorrow we take John's uh, Thanksgiving service um, at one o'clock at Houston and Williamson's then followed up to Roselawn at two o'clock uh, um, but hopefully at a later period because tomorrow's service is just a private uh, there, there, there's a restriction on the amount of numbers allowed into the church um, but we will have a memorial service uh, at a later date uh, where everyone can come along and can celebrate the life of John Walker so I would just like you today in the comfort of your homes just to think about the Walker family circle and just ask that God will just draw near and be their comfort and be their strength and just for you who knew John and who loved John just thank God for him and again as I say we just look forward to that day when we're reunited again so we just thought I would pay that little tribute just before uh, we open up God's word because John will be sadly missed as I miss my own dad and I miss some of the other the, the folks that God has called home um, I'm thinking of people like Harry Dillon and, and others over the course of the years during my 14 years have been such a blessing um, and so just acknowledge and we thank God for those wonderful fathers who we still have today and uh, let's just really enjoy our families today. Just want to turn now to God's word <coughs> and I would like to turn to if you've got your Bible with you, um, or if again you're using an electronic app, um, if you turn to Second Chronicles chapter seven, Second Chronicles chapter seven. Over these last uh, couple of weeks, we have been talking about the subject of revival, and we have looked particularly in the last number of weeks about prayer. How prayer is so important, the prominence of prayer in revival. Then last week we looked at the unity that is needed um, in prayer, how that we need to be united. And today I just want to talk about the cleansing that is required um, for a personal revival. And so if you're looking to be personally revived, there is a cleansing that is necessary. And I trust that you'll see it in the verses that we're just about to read. So we're reading from Second Chronicles there in the Old Testament. We're in chapter 7 and just going to read a few verses. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful chapter. Again, I would encourage you to, um, during the course of the day, if you get 10 minutes, read the chapter in its entirety. Second Chronicles chapter 7. But I'm going to read from verse 11 down to verse 16. And this is what God's word says. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make it to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. <clears throat> <clears throat> then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and he said to him, I have chosen your prayer. And have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. 
For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. And I do pray that God will bless his word to all of our hearts today. We've just read a few verses from a chapter that is devoted to the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem that King Solomon had built. And right through the chapter, and again, I'm just encouraging you in your own time, read right through it. <coughs> You'll see, or you, or you won't be able to, you, you can't fail to see Solomon's heart or his passion for the house of God, for the purpose that it was to be used for and why it was built in the first place. Primarily, the house of God, the Jewish temple that King Solomon had built, primarily was to be a house of prayer. See that very, very clearly <clears throat> during the whole chapter. It was to be a house of prayer. God put a stamp on it when he said to Solomon in verse 15 and 16, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. That was pretty clear, wasn't it, folks? The, the purpose of why this house was built. Now, I want us to go forward a little bit in time. Um, that particular temple that Solomon had built was actually destroyed in 586 by, <coughs> by King Nebuchadnezzar and by the Babylonian armies. Um, when the children of when the, when the people of God were taken into captivity there into Babylon and this temple um, was left as a rubble it was left as a heap and then it was rebuilt again and it was into this rebuilt temple that the Lord Jesus stepped into and we read about it in Matthew chapter 21 verses 13. Or sorry, verse 12 and verse 13. Um, again, write these verses down. You may want to read them as well as the chapter that we're reading from today. Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13. This is what it says when Jesus walked into this rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. It says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God, and he drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, folks, this incident actually happened at a place called the court of the Gentiles or the outer court uh, within the vicinity of the temple. And this court was always crowded with people, especially at Passover season, when people would travel from all over the world to be there at this wonderful feast um, of the Passover. The city of Jerusalem would have been really overcrowded. And with all the people that were visiting from all over the world, the merchants and the money changers, they actually would set up like an, an exchange bureau. Um, imagine this, an exchange bureau within the temple of God. Could you imagine that? And it was a place where animals would have been sold for sacrifice. Uh, currency would have, been, would have been exchanged for pretty extortionate prices. It's like, you know, you can imagine yourself going, uh, planning on going on a holiday and you go to an exchange bureau and you try to exchange your pounds and the dollars or in the euros same thing was happening here people were coming and they were trying to exchange their own currency and the shackles and they would have been really ripped off they would have been really overcharged um, regarding the interest rates um, and so you can imagine when Jesus walks in to this temple and he sees all of this stuff 
that's happening and how that God's house was profaned by greedy people and, it, and rightly it angered him. And you'll see here that Jesus actually made reference to two verses in the Old Testament. The first is found in Isaiah chapter 56 verse 7 and this is what it says. Even then I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And then the second verse that he refers to when he addressed these people was in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 11. And he says, has this house which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your eyes. Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. In quoting those two particular verses to the money changers, <clears throat> the Lord Jesus was rightly condemning desecration and commercialism in the house of God. And then he reminded the culprits that God intended his house to be a house of prayer. But they had made it a hangout for thieves. It wasn't being used um, for the purpose that it was built. Their ungodly means um, had been serving there. That, and, and, and Jesus just addressed and said, Look, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And here's the question, folks, today. Has God's heart really changed through time? Has it really changed? Has his agenda changed? You know, when we think about last week, when we talked about the formation of the New Testament church in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, I just want to remind folks how that the New Testament church was born out of a prayer meeting. And, you know, when we think about that today, when we think of the New Testament church being born out of prayer, here's a question, folks. You know, why has the prayer meeting become the least attended meeting in the church? I don't know about you folks that are listening on that, that, that worship in other churches, um, but certainly, generally speaking, and it's a complaint that we would hear, that the prayer meeting is normally the least attended service in the church and yet the church was born out of prayer something to think about isn't it and this leads me on to say that from the verses that we have read today making reference to the temple at jerusalem in the new testament it describes christians who makes up the church as being spiritual temples 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and verse 20 says these words. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I want you to try and connect all of the passages that we have just quoted from today, from 2 Chronicles chapter 7 into Matthew chapter 21. And here we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. And as we think about the Lord Jesus cleansing the temple in Jerusalem, I wonder today, does our spiritual temples need a cleansing in order for a personal revival to happen. One writer says, in our personal lives there is a constant need for the purging ministry of the Lord, of our bodies and our spirit, the temples of the Holy Spirit. I wonder today, you know, do we need a spiritual clear out? Do we need to get the shovel and broom, spiritually speaking, and do we need to be cleansed? Do we need to be cleared out um, in order for God to come and to move upon us again? And I guess today as we think about spiritual temples, 
I wonder what category could we fall under? Would we be under the house of prayer category that the Lord Jesus talked about? Or would we come under the den of thieves category that the Lord Jesus refers to? And what I mean by that is this house of prayer represents those who really value the place of prayer, those who want that personal revival in their own hearts and their own lives, that cleansing of the Holy Spirit, who on a regular basis feeds the devotional life, takes the time to read God's word, to worship, to praise him. That for me really is the house of prayer kind of folks, the category that we're talking about. But the other category that the Lord Jesus refers to, den of thieves, are maybe people who would rob God of the time that he has given us. Maybe we find time to, to do so many other things and yet we can't find time to pray. We can't find time to read God because we're so busy. You know, just like those guys that were in at the temple, uh, they were money changers. They were busy making money. And, you know, they could have turned around and said to the Lord Jesus, now, hold on a minute, before you, before you turn over our tables, um, we give some of our money away. We, we, we would use a portion of our money, you know, to help some of the local charities. We're not really that bad of people. And, you know, sometimes we can, you know, we can justify ourselves by our actions. We can say, Lord, you know how busy we are. We're, we're, we're busy on our jobs. We're busy making money. We're busy. And you understand all of this. And yet, when the Lord looks at us, all he really wants today is our hearts. He doesn't want us to rob him of time, 24 hours every day, that he blesses us with. He wants us to use some of that time that we can spend with him, where we can worship him, where we can pray, where we can read God's word, and just have that devotional time. Come along to church, you know, being a part of the, the church fellowship, attending the meetings. You know, that's what God desires. God just wants our hearts today and I want you to think about this um, what kind of temple are you and what kind of temple am I what category do we fall under today Charles Finney was a great revivalist he was a wonderful man of God that God used uh, during the time of the great awakening in America and he actually says this he said Think of the times that you have misspent your time, squandering the hours that God gave you to serve him. Maybe you spend too much time with idle pastimes, more than working to bring people to Jesus. Maybe you do absolutely nothing. Think of cases where you have misapplied your talents and your mental powers, where you've squandered money on your lusts, or spent it on things that you didn't need and that didn't contribute to your health, to your comfort or your usefulness. Searching words indeed from a mighty man of God. And you know something folks today, this is the cleansing required in order for a personal revival to happen in our lives. And so I'm encouraging you today that are listening on on this Father's Day, let the Holy Spirit do a spring clean in our hearts and in our lives. Even during uh, this period where God has brought us through thus far, this pandemic, um, God has kept his hands on us. Those that have been self-isolating, that have been um, restricted within your homes, living 12 weeks, not been able to get out and about. And we thank God that the death rate has reduced um, and, and we thank God that, that, as I say, that God has brought us through thus far. And soon we're looking at the prospect of coming together and fellowshipping together. That's all wonderful and we look forward to that. But today, in the comfort of your own homes, I want you to think about what we have, we have just mentioned. The cleansing that is required for revival. What kind of temples are we? Are we house of prayer temples 
or are we den of thieves temples and i just pray that god will just move upon us i just want to close today by <coughs> by mentioning over 30 years ago when i became a christian and it was over 30 years ago i remember starting to listen to christian music and i was introduced to a tape i'm sure some of you folks remember the tapes before the cds came into play and one of the first tapes that i bought was a uh, it was a recording by a man called keith green and for you that have that are familiar with the, the the musical ministry of keith green he was a wonderful man of god and him and his wife melody they would have wrote songs and um, some that we would even sing today in our, in our church uh, songs like there is a redeemer jesus god's own son precious lamb of god messiah holy one thank you oh my father for giving us your son uh, and even as i'm speaking and you know you that are familiar with the ministry of keith green um maybe you have a particular favorite song that you've listened to over the years why don't you even just text it through tell me and let us know what your favorite song um there is one particular that i love and I'm sure, i know that alan briars is listening there today and alan if you would even this afternoon if you could look out this song for me uh, and if it's there on the internet maybe you could post it um, my favourite song by Keith Green is a song called Rushing Wind. That's a marvellous song and here's the lyrics of this particular song, Rushing Wind. It says this, Rushing wind blow through this temple, blowing out the dust within. Come and breathe your breath upon me. I've been born again. Holy Spirit, I surrender Take me where you want to go. Plant me by your living water and plant me deep so I can grow. Jesus, you're the one who sets my spirit free. Use me, Lord, and glorify your holy name through me. It's a beautiful song. I would encourage you to check it out and, and listen to it and be blessed. You know, this can only happen through a house of prayer temple the temple that wants god's cleansing the temple that wants to be personally revived that wants to be moved upon there, so that we in order can can touch other people's lives and, and be a blessing to others and and so i'm just encouraging you today let god cleanse take that time lord just ask the lord to come and to cleanse us to purify us, to sanctify us, to take our lives and to use us um, for his honour and for his glory. As we close this broadcast today, um, again, I just want to um, think about, I just want to mention about folks that are in hospital. I just want to think about um, those that are sick, those that are needy, thinking about families that are going through bereavement. Um, and uh, again, I just Thank God for the Woodville community response again right up to this week um, where people in the community has been helped with essential items. And this has been a really worthwhile project uh, from day one when the pandemic came and when we closed up the church here on the 15th of March. That same week, uh, people in the community have been helped in practical ways. And again, I just want to personally thank everyone who has played their part from the packers to the drivers to everyone um, who's been a part of this response where I'm sure over 600 families, 600 deliveries have been made uh, to help um, the local community. So God bless you all and thank you for your efforts. Just going to pray right now and I will ask you please uh, that you would just bow with us. Let's just pray and talk to God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word today. And I ask that you would bless your word to all of our hearts. And even as we just connect the Old Testament with the New Testament from the passages that we have read, Lord, we ask that you would come and that you would cleanse our spiritual temples and that you would make us the people of God that you would want us to be, that you would personally revive us 
and stir us and use us. And let us be house of prayer temples, fit for the master's use. Lord, that is my prayer for everyone who has listened on today. Bless every believer. Um, for those who haven't yet put their faith and trust in you, Lord, I pray that they will just, Lord, take that time because you have you have preserved us all. You've brought us all through this pandemic and we thank you for it. Uh, and we know that we're not through it completely yet, but we thank you for thus far for what you have done for us and how you've met every need. And so I pray that you will draw the lost to yourself. I pray that you will restore the backslider and I pray that you'll revive the hearts of your people. And we do pray for families that are going through bereavement. And I do pray for the Walker Family Circle. Lord, that you'll be their comfort and be their strength. And we know where John is today. He's absent from body and he's present with the Lord. We thank you for that. And so we just pray for all who are going through bereavement. We pray for those in the hospital. We pray for those who need your touch, those who need your encouragement. Lord, we commit and commend them all into your hands. And for all of the fathers that are listening, Lord, I thank you for each one. And Lord, I just pray that you'll bless them all. And we thank you for our dads. I certainly thank you for every remembrance of mine. And we look forward to meeting again one day. But bless all the fathers and all of the families that have listened on today. Thank you for all of the help. And, and, and again, we just think of those care workers that are out today and the NHS workers and we pray your blessing upon them all and your protection over them we pray Lord hear us and answer our prayers we ask for Jesus sake Amen God bless you folks and God willing um, we'll see you next Sunday take care have a really good week God bless bye bye